LMC here. I know this is a new format. Let me know what y'all think. When we talk about the most popular cannabis brands in the world, Cookies Cannabis is without a doubt in the conversation. Almost in a class of its own, Cookies Cannabis is highly sought after and has an almost cult-like following. A Cookies cult. But who created this massively popu popular marijuana brand? Founder and Chief Executive Officer Gilbert Malam Jr., more familiarly known as hip-hop artist Burner, and grow expert Jai, or Jiga Chang, developed the Cookies strain, which became the foundations of Cookies Fam Genetics. In this video, we are going to cover Burner and his come up to being one of the most influential cannabis entrepreneurs on the planet. If you end up liking this video and would like me to do another one of these videos on someone else, please let me know down in the comments. Born and raised in San Francisco's Sunset District, Berner attended Galileo Academy of Science and Technology before he eventually dropped out. But first, let's go over his family. So, his father is Mexican and his mother is Italian. His mother was an office worker and his father was a chef at a Mexican restaurant on Fillmore Street. Berner has said that, it, that his insane work ethic stems from seeing how hard both of his parents worked when he was younger. When Berner was 13, his mother and siblings moved to Arizona, where his father planned to meet them to open a restaurant. But his father actually ended up never coming to Arizona due to an affair he was apparently having with another woman. When Berner was 16, he told his mom that he needed to move back to the Bay Area to finish up high school so he could pursue his music career. In his self-produced documentary, 1111, Berner says that at a young age, he, he knew he wanted to do something big, be around forever, and ultimately leave a legacy. In his words, legacy and immortality could best be achieved through either movies or music. And while Berner has indeed already immortalized himself as a hip hop legend with over 37 different projects released to date, he may only know now be realizing the scale to which his legacy will impact the cannabis industry. After Burner dropped out of high school his senior year, he continued to work on music and started to become a frequent at some of the medical cannabis clubs and eventually got a job at one of them named Hemp Center. Soon, Burner was not just working at the cannabis club, but actually managing it too. For five years, Burner was immersed in the developing medical cannabis industry, all the while continuing to make music and battle rap. In 2006, Burner linked up with the Bay Area rap legend Equipto, where the veteran rapper showed Burner the ropes of quality music production. After forming his own label, Burn One Entertainment, in 2007, Burner released his debut album, Track Money and Pack Money with Equipto. One thing that can be said about Burner's entrepreneurial instincts is that he realizes the power of networking, connectivism, and collaboration. After Track Money and Pack Money, he did joint albums with the legends like The Jacka and many others. He understood that collaborations meant access to another fan base, leveraging the relationship symbiotically. This strategy would eventually lead Burner that cel cel celebratism could be leveraged with cannabis and branding. Steeped in the entrepreneurial bravado of his family, Burner the MC and Burner the businessman were destined to synthesize into a titan of success. The first materialized in Burner's Cannabis Club, where patrons and acquaintances would meet to talk shop. Although it was a cannabis club, Burner and others that visited him would never shy away from sharing their other productive endeavors. In fact, Burner allowed his club to be a space for both, among other things, the cannabis industry and the music industry. This brilliant decision opened up the opportunity for creatives from different industries and backgrounds to intersect and collaborate in ways they may have not if it wasn't for spaces like Burner's. If it wasn't for this, many of us might have not even known who Burner was or is. 
and he may have faded into relative obscurity. As we know, this did not happen. It was in the context that Burner and Wiz Khalifa crossed paths. In 2012, Wiz visited Burner's club and enjoyed the atmosphere. Burner shared his recent musical endeavors with Wiz, which was met with so much enthusiasm that Wiz ended up signing Burner to his highly sought after label, Taylor Gang Records. After ingratiating himself in, into Wiz Khalifa's collective, Burner quickly rose to prominence inside and outside of Taylor Gang, assisting Wiz in his development and launch of his own canvas brand, Khalifa Kush. If you have had your ear to the ground around this time, then you would remember the wave of hype and controversy that orbited Khalifa. A lot of these moments, such as the infamous Kanye West slash Wiz Khalifa beef, can be understood as just as pivotal for Burner's career trajectory as they were for Wiz. Wiz Khalifa said, yo man, hit that KK and chill. And Kanye thought he met Kim Kardashian and then he just completely went off the fucking rails with that. Thank you, Mr. West, the KK sales went crazy. I had a great few months after that, man, I love you. Kanye. Oh, so so after that, uh, Khalifa uh, Kush just, just went bananas. It was always going bananas, but that shit just made it even go even more crazy because everyone was like, it's weed, you crazy bastard. And everyone was going crazy on him. And, I just know that the dispensary uh, in Las Vegas went nuts with the KK after that. When Burner understood how the celebrity attention translated into building brand equity and could drive business to the KK brand, this must have been an enlightening moment, potentially giving him an understanding that very few people involved in the cannabis industry had at the time. The power of celebrity and music. It is here that we see Burner develop his own strand of multiplicitous branding and thus spreading his wings and establish once and for all that he is the entrepreneur's entrepreneur. After this, it's only a short hop, skip and jump to hemp infused water, hemp based clothing slash apparel, and the ever so popular Girl Scout cookie strains, all of which would skyrocket Burner and his brand cookies into the future of the cannabis industry. Cookies grew more and more popular and started to receive recognition all due to the continuous diversification of its production. With the development of the legal cannabis industry and the imminent explosion of hip hop into the mainstream, it was obvious that Burner was preparing himself to succeed in the business landscape to come. Burner would, and still does to this day, name drop his strains and brands in his own music, building name recognition, hype, and a tailored brand perception for the public to receive. Let me ask you this. What are some of the most commonly recurring consumerist themes in hip hop? Designer clothes, designer cars, designer jewelry. Are you seeing the pattern? Hip hop has a hyper focus on exclusive, expensive, and high quality designer goods. Now, if we have exclusive genetics, high quality product, that is enough demand for it to be expensive. Well, do we have designer cannabis? I would argue yes. Not only does hip hop create and or validate the designer cannabis perception for a company like Cookies, but it also amplifies the perception to a massive audience. While Burner definitely leverages his music to promote Cookies and his other brands, he is only one rapper with one fan base. Burner's skills at networking and insight to make strategic partnerships in the music industry allowed the Cookies family of brands to be fully embraced by a large portion of the hip hop industry. It wouldn't be long before crowd favorites like Migos and up and comers like Neff the Pharaoh would start to associate themselves with Burner's brand, even name dropping them in their own songs and rocking, their own, rocking the Cookies merch. Burner said in a 2018 Vlad TV interview that it takes him two hours to get out of the house every morning because he has to get Cookies product and apparel ready to give out to other musicians or celebrities throughout the day while he's working as a musician. When it comes to strategic partnerships, Burner has made, I think a great example is when he made the partnership with the legendary hip hop manager, Steve Lobel, otherwise known as We Workin' and had him invest into the Maywood Cookies Cannabis Store in LA. Now, for those who don't know who Steve Lobel is, well, this man has been working in the music industry for decades. And well, this man is connected. What up, what up, baby boy? 
right here. Kendrick Lamar, my big homie Steve, you feel me? Yeah, just a man right here, get the camera off me. <laughs> hey, you know tell I mean? me little stories when we that tour with J-Rock and Nipsey. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, really, how long is this? Years back, way before the world even thought about right? hearing about me. Uh, just giving me the game. I think it goes, you know, being a young cat in the game early, so many times you got to bump your head to get where you at, and you make mistakes. You know, being on that first tour with you, made a whole lot of mistakes, you know what I'm saying? And it, was a, it was a lesson learned, but when you have people like this, uh, uh, right there over a 17-year-old kid, a 20-year-old kid, then you be in good hands by the time I turn 25, I know the game. The biggest the game. artist in the world, I'm proud yeah. of this guy, is Kendrick Lamar, if you don't know, I'm sure you know. And I'm the OG, what's my name? Yeah, Bell, what's poppin'? He's most known for being the manager of the legendary hip-hop producer Scott Storch. And a legendary producer like Scott Storch is always in demand. Whether it be from the OGs or the new and young artists popping off on the scene. So when you have a manager of a superstar producer that works with the most popular young and old rap rappers now invested in your cannabis company, well, those connections are going to come in handy. In the same 2018 Vlad TV interview I referenced earlier, we see Vlad bewildered at the long list of world-class features on Burner's album that was coming out at the time. To summarize Burner's response to Vlad, when you have close friends like Steve Bell to call up, you pretty much can get any feature you want. And Burner is right. Leverage the cannabis into music and the music into cannabis. He had garnered such a fluid and organic organization of business flows and ties that it was almost as if he was tending to a garden at this point. It was just a matter of time before it would bloom into what we know Cookies as today. Cookies' success was truly materializing. As we've seen, Burner saw the potential in intertwining cannabis brands with hip hop and celebrity culture. Now, why don't we go over the Cookies family of brands? So Cookies is obviously the flagship, flagship brand, which sells millions of dollars worth of apparel, licensing deals, cannabis sales, and more. He owns Exotics and Lemonade, both of which are popular flower brands in their own right. When it comes to cannabis accessories, he owns Santa Cruz Shredder, a high quality cannabis grinder, while he also has his own paper brand, Vibes. Then we have Hemp 2 O. And what is fascinating about Burner's ability to expand Hemp 2 O was his ability to successfully leverage his social media following. He talks about in that same Vlad TV interview that he showed a room full of 7-Eleven executives the power of social media. He went on live and he told his fans to go to the 7-Eleven Instagram and to post and say, on one of their comment on one of their pictures and say, please get Hem2O into your store. Five minutes later, they had around 40,000 comments or so. And that right there shows you his ability to leverage not only just celebrity relationships and celebrity um, endorsements, but also leverage his own celebrity, leverage being a rapper. Now, he was also an early investor into Weed Maps and also owns G Pen, a popular cannabis vaporizer. Burner has also recently announced Cookies is going to be launching an events services company that offers a mobile dispensary. Most cookie stores that Burner owns makes 300,000 in sales a day, and their flagship store on Melrose apparently does $500,000 in sales a day. Yeah, 500K a line around the block every day. His licensing deals with multi-state operators have started to expand and spread like wildfire. Gage Cannabis is Michigan, is licensing cookies. Green Thumb Industries is licensing the brand in a multitude of states. Cookies operates in medical and recreational markets across the country. It has 17 re retail locations. In addition, it also operates a medical shop in Tel Aviv, Israel, and has a cookies clothing store in Barcelona, Spain. Cookies Cannabis has been extremely intelligent in their business expansion approach. Burner and his team brilliantly used the Cookies apparel and accessory stores as a safer, more cost-effective way to test new market potentials. For example, they opened a clothing store in Seattle almost three to four years before they were even selling recreational cannabis in the state of Washington. 
during those two years or so, or three years, Cookies was able to understand and grow local hype for the cannabis brand, laying the infrastructure down to have a successful cannabis launch. Cookies market entry strategy has proven to be extremely effective and their proven standard operating procedures now allow them to license and brand and scale the business at a much faster rate while still maintaining the Cookies brand's integrity and equity. A really important point I want to note is that Burner's success comes from a number of different reasons, but one of the most important is his ability to cultivate and build a solid team around him. He has a team that operates efficiently, brands meticulously, and thinks uniquely. A true entrepreneur knows the extreme importance of having a quality team around them. Again, his tendency towards collaboration helps him succeed. Now, Burner's talked in a number of different videos about turning down $800 million to acquire the Cookies brand. You know, uh, is it true you turned down $800 million to buy your company? Uh, yeah. Did you... Hold on one second, because I got to think about this for a second. How the fuck did, did... Did you just say no, or you said, let me think about it and get uh, back? Because how uh, do you make a decision to say yeah, no? Yeah, I mean, look, it still fucks with me. I mean, I had to think about it for a while, but... I'll give you I'll give you guys some game because this is such a good interview. I never really talk about business like this, but I want people out there to be motivated, and I want people out there to know that like the first deal is not the best deal. Mm. I cannot wait to wait to write my book about it. I mm. want to write. A you book. should. I'm gonna write a book called The Best Deal. And so, all right, I get offered eight hundred million dollars for cookies in general, the whole thing, but a lot of it's stock from a Canadian LP, a private Canadian company that's on the stock market. Um, I looked at it like this if the first deal I got was 800 million bucks and it's mostly stock and the stock game could be like great and then drop um, and everyone's going public right now what 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 would happen if I turned it down that that dead air makes me pretty pretty much a boss to do that so instead of taking 800 million I took 10 million dollars in cash for 10% of my company as a friends and family round to invest into infrastructure. And the next round we're doing, we're evaluated at 400 million and mm -hmm. I'll probably take a small investment at that. And we'll build it up. And while everyone else is getting bought out right now with Canadian stock, they may win, but I'm in it to get cashed out for real because I don't want some stock. I don't wanna have to learn how to sell stock or wait and, and play that game i want one of the big alcohol companies when it's time to come cash me the fuck out as they should i want heineken to come cash me out i want southern wine to come cash me out i want them to come with that check because mm. they got it mm. constellation just put 400 million dollars into uh canopy um up there in, in canada they put a check well they could have came and bought me for four no i'm sorry i'm high as fuck Four billion dollars. Mm. Canopy just got four billion dollars. We're talking about a publicly traded company in, in Canada that doesn't have the most revenue. I think the revenue was negative a lot or whatever it was. They don't have hella money. They just have the brands. Mm. So I'm building a house of brands. It's mm. going to be like Facebook. And when they come, they're going to have to buy us. And, they're gonna, and I would much rather a constellation come give me four billion dollars. Cookies is a private company, so figuring out its true value is pretty difficult. But what we do know is what is with Cookies, we see genetics and brands that are massively in demand, selling at designer prices, and this is only going to keep scaling. It's hard to see a ceiling for Cookies Cannabis and its family of brands approaching anytime soon. The potential value of Cookies 10 to 20 years from now could very easily be in the multiples of billions. Money sounds great. But wouldn't you want to be around forever, slash leave a le legacy like Berner said he wanted to? I can't think of too many more impactful legacies than leaving behind a company that has revolutionized not just the cannabis space, but also the brand development space. Little more needs to be said to prove Berner's prowess as an entrepreneur. In this series, we're going to continue to explore the lives and business endeavors of the cannabis industry's greatest minds. We thought we'd start with Burner. After all, he is a landmark success. 
Thank you so much for watching the first episode of the High Design documentary series. We would love your feedback. Please drop a comment down below. Let me know what's the next person you want us to cover. And really appreciate y'all. We'll see you in the next one. Signing out.